set of the 2017. Okay, last question set of the 2017 multiple choice. Okay, antisense drugs are a group of medicines that act by binding to DNA to block the synthesis of some proteins. Which line in the table is correct for antisense drugs? Okay, they are blocking, so that means that they are working against the normal um, function of the body, so they are antagonists, and they are binding to DNA, so the receptor is the DNA. Pretty straightforward. Question 22, you can see I've pulled data book stuff. Which of the following would be most suitable as a reagent in the gravimetric analysis of silver? Okay, so I'm going to pull out my silver for this. So gravimetric analysis means I need to make silver and its whatever it's attached to as a precipitate. So there's quite a lot of insoluble, so this is good, right? So sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate would produce silver nitrate. It's very soluble, so that's no. Rid of that. Potassium sulfate. It's soluble, so no. Okay, barium carbonate is insoluble, so in with a shout. And ammonium chloride, that's going to give me silver chloride, and that is insoluble. So these two are in with a shout, but that means there's going to be another problem somewhere. Here we go, barium carbonate up here. Barium carbonate is insoluble itself, so it's not going to form the precipitate. Ammonium chloride, on the other hand, it's very soluble, so that's good. So D. Right, question 23. I do not like this question. Well, I don't mind the question, but I don't like the answer. Um, using colorimetry, the most appropriate filter for determining the concentration of green nickel ions in a solution would be... Okay, so I pulled up the colour wheel and I looked at green and I said if it's absorbing in this... Sorry, transmitting in this, reflecting off the green, then my absorption that I would go with automatically would be in the red. However... That is not what they're looking for. What they're saying, the most appropriate filter. So what we need to think about is actually the kind of whole range of wavelength. And basically we've got our green is in the middle of our wavelength set. And we've got blue at this end and red at this end. And if it's green, what we're getting is absorbance in the red. Sorry, absorbance in the red and the blue. Just say, putting it the wrong way around. Um, but not in the green, and that's where we're getting our reflection. So if we've got blue and red being absorbed, then that means that we're looking at a purpley colour, so we're actually looking towards the violet end. Um, yeah, I, as I say, I, I would have automatically gone for the red. Um, what you can see for sure is definitely get rid of C, um, because that's in the green, but correct answer is A. Question 24. Thin layer chromatography for a mixture of amino acids. This is a pretty straightforward one after the last one. Which amino acid has an RF value of approximately 0 0.75? Right, so you're expected to know the RF formula. So RF is your distance um, travelled by your spot, whatever that is. Okay. Uh, divided by the distance travelled by solvent. So your solvent front, in fact, let's put that by solvent front. It's more correct. Okay, so our solvent front is given up here at eight centimetres. And they're nicely, this is marked at zero from the point of origin. So what we're looking for, if an RF is 0 0.75, so basically the distance travelled by the spot has to be three quarters of the distance travelled by the solvent. That's pretty nice. Um, I'm looking for 0.75 would be 3 quarters would be at 6, so it must be amino acid Q. Okay, 25. Which line in the table shows the properties of the most suitable solvent to extract caffeine from an aqueous solution of tea? Okay, so for it to be a good solvent, um, it's kind of obvious where you're going for the first bit. Caffeine has to be more soluble in the solvent than it is in the tea. So more soluble is good. Um, which takes out C and D, okay? And then we need to make sure that once it's in that solvent, it can be separated. So I need it to be immiscible in the T solution, i.e. does not mix. So A. 26. A series of titrations was performed to determine the concentration of vitamin C in a brand of fruit juice. A standard solution of the fruit juice was prepared and titrated with iodine solution. Which of the following would be a suitable control experiment for this analysis? So a control has to remove the thing which you 
think is doing what's going on so we basically have to find a way of removing the fruit juice um, so a titrating more samples is not a control that's very good for reliability but not a control um, titrate a solution of pure vitamin C of known concentration this one's good because that tells you what your iodine solution is doing under set concentrations of vitamin C titrate more samples again reliability titrate a sample from a different carton again that's good for just making sure you've got a, a repeat that's that's kind of independent so B for control 27 okay um, 50 centimeters cubed of 0 0.01 molar barium hydroxide were added to 50 centimeters cubed of 0 0.01 molar um, sodium sulfate concentration of sodium hydroxide in moles per litre in the resulting solution is okay um, right so this is a one to one to two so I'm just going to work out one of these doesn't matter which one you know let's take it as the barium hydroxide but doesn't actually matter um, so moles is concentration times volume so 0 0.01 times 0 0.05 gives me 0 0.00, let's get this right, we're going 0 0.05, okay, um, then I'm going to multiply that by 2 to get me to how many moles I've got of my sodium hydroxide, 0 0.001, and then to get concentration, moles over volume, so 0 0.001 divided by, my volume is now 50 and 50 so that gives me 100 and that gives me B just be careful I, I, I'm assuming I've got the right number of zeros in there okay 28 1.06 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of phenylamine react with 5.16 grams of bromine which equation shows the correct stoichiometry for this reaction okay um it's a little bit footry, but not too bad, actually, I think, for this one, right? So, first of all, I've got to work out how many moles of bromine are actually involved in the 5.16, okay? So, that's going to be 5.16 divided by 159.8. Remember, it's BR2, hence why I've got that one, which gives me 0 0.0323 moles. Um, to put it in this format, just to make it a little bit easier, that means that I have... 3.23 times 10 to the 2 minus 2 sorry moles and then I'm just looking for a ratio so match it up against 1.06 times 10 to the minus 2 divide them like divide 3.23 divide by 1.06 I get a ratio of 1 to 3 and that's your answer okay Question 27, sorry, 27, 29. Um, a little bit of work. Ibuprofen is used for the relief of pain, fever, and inflammation. Structural formula is given. If one tablet contains 300 mg of ibuprofen, approximately how many tablets can be manufactured from one mole of ibuprofen? So you're going to have to work out the gram formula mass of this, which will give you the mass of one mole, and then divide it by 300 to work out, or 300 mg, being very careful there, uh, to work out how many tablets. So, um, carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus my six in the middle. Okay, so I've got 13 carbons. Hydrogens, again, being really careful, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, and oxygens are okay. We just have two. Right, so. Just do formula mass for that one, gives you 206 grams. But I'm, I'm just going to convert that straight away into milligrams. So, just to make it a little bit easier. And we know that 300 milligrams gives me one tablet. So, what does this give me? Pretty straightforward. And it gives me 686.667. Uh, which is 6.8.7 times 10 to the 2, okay? 
And the last one in the paper, well, this section. Term accuracy is used to describe how close an experimental result is to the theoretical. Term precision is used to describe how close a set of duplicate results are to each other. Four students determine the percentage by mass of chlorine in, this is barium chloride with two waters, uh, which of the following sets of results is both accurate and precise. Okay, right. Um, e, let's have a look. 20.0, 20.0, sorry, 29.0, 29.0, 29.1. That is pretty precise. Okay, 29.1, 28.2, 29.9. That is not. So let's get rid of that in terms of precision. E is much better. Um, 34.0, 34.1, 34.0. So that's the same level of um, precision as A. And not surprisingly, we can get rid of D because 34.0 and we've got 33.8. So this is, okay, we're going to take out that one as well. Okay, so we're left with which of these is actually accurate. Okay, so to do that, pretty straightforward. Um, let's, we've got barium, chloride, and we've got hydrogen and oxygen in there. So we've got one of those, two of those, four of those, be careful with the two, and two of those. So I'm just going to do a formula mass for this, which 137.3. I have obviously gone and looked up earlier. Uh, we're going 20. Oh, why did I put a 12 there? Sorry, that's 35.5. Just rub that out. Because obviously the whole point is to work out chlorine. I just went C and put carbon down. Uh, so that's 71. And 4. And I put a 4 there. Oh, good lord. Uh, 32. Right. Okay. Which gives me a total of 244.3. I am looking for the percentage by mass of chlorine. So chlorine is 71 out of 244.3. So 71 divided by 244.3 times it by 100 gives me 29.06%. So which one got closest to that is definitely A. So ignoring the fact that for some reason I was making hydrogen a relative atomic mass of 4 and chlorine 12, um, the rest of it works out nicely. Okay, that's... Uh, that's the section.